Jesus really did come back from the dead in space and time, and he appeared to people and resurrected body. And Paul gives the list. One of the people that he mentions actually gives special place to is that he said, and he appeared to James. Now, we don't have a record in any of the gospel readings of Jesus making a special appearance to James, but you can trust the fact that if that's what was written, that's probably happened. <laughs> So that again, and that says something about the significance of James, particularly in the life of the early church, that he would be listed as having someone who received a very particular appearance from Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the apostles, except for Cephas, Peter, of course, is, aren't mentioned, but James is. So that already should notate something to us about, oh, this is a person with no small stature. And then what happens is that when you get to the Acts lesson, and this is where I actually want to take just a little bit of time, is to just see James's role. You see, what's going on is they're wrestling with the cultural problems of missionary expansion. They're evangelistically reaching their neighbors with the gospel. And yet who they're reaching are not their fellow Jews. They're reaching non-Jews, Gentiles, pagans who at a cultural level have almost nothing in common mm -hmm. with their Jewish brothers and sisters. No. They have a different standard of ethics. They have a different standard of morality. They have a different standing of understanding of the role of men and women. I mean, you could just go through the whole list about if you're an Israelite, you think, believe, behave, and act socially and personally this way. On the other hand, if you're one from one of the non-Jewish traditions, you're over here someplace. And it's like math and night and day. No wonder Paul would say at one point, trying to lay out the contrast, what does Athens have to do with Jerusalem? Mm. He's describing something a lot more than, you know, me being from one part of the world and you another. He's describing an entirely different thought, locus, and orientation. Mm. So when you've got somebody in that Athenian pagan milieu, and that person comes to faith in Christ, what should be reasonably expected of them in terms of a new standard of behavior? Because, as we know, if you're going to walk with Jesus, your life ought to look like Jesus, not just say, I believe. It ought to actually change the way you behave. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to wrestle with the fact that do we actually make them comply with all the things that we live under as Jews, meaning all of the Jewish law? And so what happens is that they're debating back and forth, and it's no small controversy. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love about the New Testament, it doesn't shield you or protect you from the deep parts of human division and sin that happen in the church in terms of trying to work these questions out. So it's, this is a hot topic. Mm -hmm. um, and notice what happens is that who comes up with the solution is James. He's the one who literally, in the midst of all of this hubbub, stands up and lays out what's going on. And he says, we've been hearing these reports. God is doing miracles, signs and wonders, it says. People are coming to faith. People are being healed. Wonders means healings, deliverances from demonic power, all of that. And so, in other words, God's at work here. We can't say that's not happening. So what do we do? How do we catch up with what God is doing? And, and you know, if you're in the mission field, that's what it feels like. How do I catch up with what God is doing? And if you don't feel that way, probably you're not in some kind of mission field, I would want to say. You're more in the maintenance pastoral care mode. But they're on the mission field. And he says, and so he said, look, it's very clear that God is looking favorably on the Gentiles. And this isn't this what the Lord said he was going to do. And therefore, he quotes an Old Testament passage about God rebuilding the tent of David. And what he means by that is that the original vision for the nation of Israel is that they would do more than just be a separate holy people. They would actually be a light to the nations. Mm -hmm. That they would be a place where people could come and see who the true God is and how that true God has revealed himself to these people. So that's what's going on. And quite honestly, whenever you're planning a new church or you're thinking about missionary expansion, that's what you're doing. You're, to use this phrase, you're planting the tent of David. You're raising up a group of people who in their lives and by their declaration reflect who God is and what it is that God is doing. So how do we do all of that? And so James says, notice, 
Therefore, I have reached a decision. That's a lot of authority. Mm -hmm. He didn't say it just seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us, which is what they do later when they're trying to wrestle with another issue. He said, I. In other words, he's acting as the apostolic bishop over this council. Mm -hmm. And therefore, and then he comes up with what has often been considered the compromise, which is right. In other words, in the midst of, should they obey all the law? Or should they obey none of the law? James, in essence, says, for now, it's conditional. It's not for all time. They should do this much. Because that will allow Jew and Gentile, who are trying to get to know each other, to trust each other, and to find out what it's like to live out a common Christian life together, which, see, neither has ever done. This is brand new territory. So let's do this much. And he lays it out and all the things that you heard. In other words, they're not going to drink blood or take anything that's in blood. They're not going to be engaged in any kind of sexual immorality, which specifically means sexual relationships outside the boundaries of marriage. They're not going to go to temples any longer. And they're not going to eat anything that's strangled. And that takes you back to see the Levitical Code, Dietary Code. Can we all agree that it's okay for us to live under this discipline for a while? Because that's what I think we should do. And there's this great agreement, we're going to do that. And then as a result, the church moves forward. Because the point is, what can we do to help facilitate getting the gospel out? Mm. That's really the reason and the rationale for the decision. We often wrestle with issues of church controversy that are self-protecting. What can we do to maintain the institution? And that's our driver. That is not the driver in the New Testament. The driver in the New Testament is about what can we do to expand and to get the gospel out? What kinds of decisions that we make, whether it be what we ask of new believers or any other thing that you can think of, that actually will bring more people into faith in Jesus Christ. It is a missionary concern. That's why James begins with, what are we doing here? We're fulfilling the prophecy that God is reestablishing the town of David. Places where people can see who God, in fact, truly is. And that be reflected in their life and worship. So I would say to us, board, leaders, that's the lesson for James for us. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in my report later. But it was so clear when Earl and Finance Committee and I were walking through the budget together, so much of what we do actually is around maintenance. Mm -hmm. And we wrestle with how do we fund and provide resources for getting the gospel out. That's a different way of thinking, particularly for a diocese that has been captivated, in some ways, primarily with maintenance. So I think we take a clue from James that as we wrestle with these issues, even down to how we do our budget later, mm -hmm. and the other things that come before us from time to time, I want to make sure we're keeping the tent of David in mind, James's priority, whether we're dealing with local church issues, what would best help us get the gospel out? Mm -hmm. So that in fact more and more people are coming to faith in Christ. Because if that's not happening, we're just another institution. Amen. 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 Amen.